everybody and big welcome to a deck tech video for Jeska tries reborn and Ishai Oitai Dragon Speaker. Now a little bit of a disclaimer here, I've actually never played this commander pair in my entire life. However, I played against them quite a lot, so I, I do know quite a lot about them. But if you actually are interested in seeing this deck played in action, Jordan is actually giving it a go on one of our videos on the CDHTV YouTube channel. Link up there as well as in the description below of the video if you want to see some cool falcon punches. But let's get back to the deck. So I have some really good opinions about this deck and I have some really bad opinions about this deck. And you always start with the bad news, right? What I personally dislike the most about this commander pair is the thing that it's doing best. The why you kinda play it. You see Ishai here gets plus one plus one whenever an opponent casts a spell. So if your three opponents collectively cast six spells, it turns into a 7-7. Seven, seven. And then Yeskai can minus zero make a creature triple hit. So your Ishai will now hit for 21 commander damage and instantly kill a player. At first glance when you read that you think that's great but then when you bring it into practice there are some problems with it you need to think about before you execute that action. Killing a player has risk. Sometimes you actually need that player, strangely. Let me give you some perspective. A typical combo this deck is usually going for is the Anvil Breach, Brain Freeze and Lions and Diamond combo. A really great combo, you use Anvil Breach to recast Lions and Diamond a bunch and then you use Brain Freeze to mill yourself, giving you more fuel for your Lions and Diamond and giving you more fuel to cast Brain Freeze over and over. Eventually build a really high storm count so you can start to mill your opponents out and when they don't have any libraries remaining and you have maybe a few cards remaining, you can deck them. With something as simple as a Wheel of Fortune, however, if there is a deafening silence or a rule of law effect in play or something that is preventing you from going for this combo, you have a solution to that problem. You have the commander damage swings that kills this tax piece. Remember, the best removal is player removal. However, what if destroying this unlocks a greater evil? You see, maybe you're not the only one suffering from this rule of law deafening silence. There might be some Adnos or Bola Citadel variants in the pod as well that also want to get rid of it. And if you're getting rid of the Deafening Silence, they don't need to. One of the bigger skills you need to have when you're piloting this deck is Threat Assessment. Evaluating all of your opponents around the table. And if you're going to kill them one by one, you really need to strategize how you're going to do it. Just not take someone that feels right at the moment. You need to think about if I kill this person, how will that impact the game? A card I should talk a lot more about in general is Gitaxian Probe, a great card. Now imagine you have a kill on the spot. You can kill anyone. You cause a Gitaxian Probe at some player and you find this, four counter spells. Are you killing that player? No, you're not. That person doesn't have anything in his hand that is threatening you. This can of course interact with some of your combos, but they can also interact with other people's combos as well. Also, if you are in a 1v1 with this person, you have a flyer that will one-shot that player, so this is the person you're killing last in your kill priority thing. You really want this person to actually stick around for a while, because this person could help you not die to someone that is going for the win. It might sound strange, but sometimes you need to look at your opponents as a form of resource. Because sometimes your opponents are going to look at this as a potential resource as well. You might be doing their dirty work killing players they want you to kill for them. The second thing I don't like about this commander pair is that you don't have any card draw in the command zone whatsoever. Now I know that there's a lot of different commanders out there that are performing quite well without having card draw in the command zone. However, it is something to actually think about when you're building this deck. Because if I would give you an example here, Francis and Tumna, if you're playing this as your commander pair, you don't need to really care. You could build this so easily because you always have a Kadra in the command zone. 
with Yeska and Ishai, your 99 need to include a lot of card draw to fix that for them. But don't worry, there's a lot of awesome cards in the Magic the Gathering universe in the right colors for us that can really draw a lot of cards for us. Dragon Raid Channeler might look a little bit weird compared to the others. It is definitely not auto include, it's not even card draw actually. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, surveil, which means you can put it into your graveyard instead of drawing it, so that's kinda helping you go through the deck, avoiding cards you don't want to draw. But also, we were on the Undul Breach plan. This is fueling your graveyard, making your breach combo a little bit more successful. Creatures like Dragon Raid Channel is usually better with Tumna that want to have creatures with evasion. So in the end, Dragon Raid Chandler definitely not an auto include, but something to consider and well think about. Still, on the topic of card draw and on the topic of Unwool Breach combining the two, we have Teferi, Master of Time. In my opinion, a really amazing card for CD8 in general. A little bit expensive, it's never really auto included, but it fits perfectly if you want to turn your deck into a mid-range deck. But also, if you're able to actually ultimate this thing, you're getting two extra turns after this one. Which means that if your Isha is big enough, you have three turns to kill three players. That's easily achieved. Or well, you need to actually get there. You need to sit there and pass the turn twice with your Teferi in play, no one removing it or no one attacking it. But you have a really big blocker that can actually protect your Teferi, so getting there isn't impossible. And even if you don't get to the Teferi ultimate, you'll still be able to sit there and acquire Kadra and do some interaction with the Planeswalker anyways. It's not actually Kadra, it's just sculpting, but still it's gonna do some great work for you. I think this transitions pretty good what I actually like about this commander pair. Let's begin with something small. We have a three color combination. A combination that is actually giving you access to a lot. Yes, Kai really builds towards that Unwell Breach. Blue for Fasas, red for Unwell Breach, and white for Savine's Reclamation. Savine's Reclamation will really help you with your intuition piles. You can grab something like Unduel Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond and Savine's Reclamation. So if this is the pile you're creating with your intuition, they can give you Unduel Breach, they're never gonna do that, that's terrible. They could give you Savine's Reclamation, which is basically a free mana cost Unduel Breach, that's terrible, they're never gonna do that either. So they're usually gonna give you Lion's Eye Diamond. You crack your Lion's Eye Diamond and you discard your entire hand. And with the mana from Lion's Eye Diamond, you can flash back Savines from the graveyard, gaining that Unwell Breach. And also, when Savines is flashback, you make a copy, so you also bring the Lion's Eye Diamond back as well. And then you can recast Intuition from the graveyard and find Brain Freeze and some other cool cards with it. But why it also gives us access to Ephemerate. And there's a pretty awesome combo line with Shh. It's a one card combo. You only need Spell Seeker to win. You do need six mana, however. One blue, one white, two red, and two generic. That's a lot of mana, but still a one card combo. Let's go through it. Begin with casting Spell Seeker. Let's pretend that's the only card we have in our hand. We currently spend three mana. You find Ephemerate. You cast Ephemerate, targeting Spell Seeker. Ephemerate will go into Rebound, which means it's gonna be casted next turn. Now, Spell Seeker is finding Final Fortune, and this is the total mana you need to win on the spot. So you cast Final Fortune. You're going to die after the next turn, but don't worry, we're gonna win during that turn. So you go to your next final turn. Ephemerate will be casted again from the Rebound Exile. So you're gonna flicker Spellseeker once more. This time on the ETB effect we're finding a white card, an amazing white card, Enlightened Tutor. And before we draw, because this is happening in instant speed, the rebound is happening before your draw. Cast Enlightened Tutor and you put Andul Breach on top of your library. So you go to your turn, you draw Breach, you cast Breach, and now you can recast Ephemerate once more on 
the spell seeker and with the spell seeker etb you can find brain freeze and then you can cast that enlightening tutor from your graveyard to put lion's eye diamond on top of your library and then just cast brain freeze milling the lion's eye diamond and a lot of other cool cards and now you have the brain freeze lion's diamond and will bridge combo easily assembled the spell seeker ephemerate combo is perfect for this deck because this is a typical mid-range deck you just want to sit back control draw cards and establish something having a one card combo is great expensive yes but still a one card combo also all the cards except for ephemerate is pretty amazing inside the deck anyways so truly the free colors that this commander pair is giving you is great the other thing that I think is huge, and this is probably the best thing about this commander in pair in my opinion, is Jeskas minus X ability. Jeskas tries reborns deals X damage up to 3 targets. So with this you can win with infinite mana. This naturally means that you could go for the Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo. You need your Scepter, you need your Dramatic Reversal, and you need Mana Rocks that will produce one more than two. So if you have exactly this board state, you have infinite mana. So with infinite mana, you cast Jeska, and then you minus Eska's loyalty down to zero. She will die, you'll deal some cute damage to your opponent's faces, and then you recast her with the infinite mana, always paying for command attacks until your opponents are dead so that suddenly enables more combos if you want to include more combos but you don't need to look at that ability as a combo finisher a mana outlet for infinite mana you could always look at it as a interactive ability i usually play cc red light captain that's my favorite commander by the way and I usually play a lot of really low CMC, low toughness creatures, hate bears, mana dorks, value creatures, etc, etc. And I really dislike Jeska. Jeska is really strong versus my deck. Because if I accidentally blow up a little bit too much, I expand a little bit too heavily with the board state, Jeska could easily reset that and just pinpoint down board wipe and like mini board wipe free creatures out of my board state. Jeska doesn't even need to target a specific opponent only you could target one creature per opponent or two creature at one player and one creature at another player and you can pinpoint you can be specific let's say you want to get rid of the Archon of Emeria because you want to unlock more than one spell per turn for yourself but you don't want to kill the collector Oof because there's another player with a lot of artifacts that you're a little bit scared of. A simple clean mass board wipe can't be specific, it will kill everything. A third thing I really like about this commander pair is that Ishai can actually hurt the life total. So in the beginning of this video I talked about the risk of accidentally killing people. However, you don't always need to kill people. You see a lot of CDH decks are using life as a resource and Ishai can smash a little bit of face, a little bit, just, just a tiny bit, to decrease the life total where Ardnos suddenly doesn't really do anything. The same with Sylvan Library. You can make someone really scared of drawing too many cards with their Sylvan Library. And it might even be so that you want that player to actually stick around because that player have some stacks cards in play that you actually like, maybe some counter spells at the ready, that person is keeping another opponent in check, but you don't want that person to suddenly burst off and win with Ard Nauseum, then you can hurt him, just decrease the life total, but don't kill him. A fourth really great thing about this commander pair is that it can be quite adaptive. You can actually build it in a lot of different ways. And that's great because suddenly you can adapt it to various kinds of metagames. For example, if your specific metagames calls for it, you could run something like Blood Moon and Back to Basic. Great stacks cards against non-basic lands. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play this, and I personally don't recommend this. They aren't great currently, but if for some reason you think this would be great versus your metagame, then you could do this. But once again, this is just more of an example. In any case, that's it. That's all I have to say for now. I hope this deck tech video helps you out in building Jeska and Ishai.
take care guys i'll see you around Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.